I'm Dr. Greg Watchmaker, and this is our patient Wayne, who was kind enough to uh, share his experience with Dupuytren's disease. Dupuytren's disease is a contracture that occurs in the palm, typically of people in, uh, of Nordic or German descent. And Wayne, I thought you'd just share uh, a little bit your experience with when this began and what type of symptoms you had that uh, brought you to see me. Well, what had happened was uh, my inside of my palm, I felt, uh, I felt like something getting hard. And uh, after a couple of years, it started closing up. And now it's really hard and it's just getting worse day by day, so. Are there certain things you, that you can't do because of the way your small finger is pulled into your palm? Right, well, I can't put my hand in this pocket. Okay. <laughs> it's simple stuff. You know? Sure. Like my hand around the steering wheel, shaving. So Wayne has a pretty classic form of Dupuytren's. What he has is a cord that begins down in the mid palm here and then comes up as a thick band into the small finger. That cord prevents him from straighten his, straightening his finger out, and when we measure Wayne, his loss of extension is about 64 degrees. The cord doesn't develop overnight. It's actually a very slowly progressive process. How long did yours take before it got to this stage? About two years. All right, and that's actually quicker than even a lot of people, so you have a more aggressive form of it. Dupuytren's disease sometimes can progress over a period of 10 and 15 years but invariably it's a slow, steady contracture. And eventually people talk about the functional things just like you mentioned. Right. So the things that we talked about uh, before, uh, uh, before today was we talked about the treatments for Dupuytren's disease. There are several treatments available and early on those treatments included either observation if the contracture didn't bother you enough and that's certainly what I recommend when people come in with just a small cord that isn't contracting. For those patients, we just provide education and we tell them what they have and that it's a benign process and not to worry. As a contractor gets worse though, in the olden days, all we would offer to a patient is surgery. And that surgery would involve a zigzag type of incision that would allow me to remove that cord. A lot of people feel that this cord must represent the functional tendon that allows them to bend their finger. But truly, this cord is above the tendon and uninvolved in your finger uh, motion. The tendon is safely beneath the cord. Nowadays, though, we have two additional treatment options for Dupuytren's disease. The first option is that we can do what's called a needle epineurotomy, and that's what we're going to do today. And what that involves is where I take a little bit of numbing medicine and place that several, uh, in several locations along your cord, and then I'll take a small beveled needle and I'll divide that cord in several spots so that I can start straightening your finger up. Sometimes that finger will come up with a pop all of a sudden, so don't be startled if that happens. Sometimes it's a slow, steady process as I divide that cord in a couple of spots. In the end, though, we try to get a perfectly straight finger. That's not always possible, but often, when the main knuckle is the one involved, we can get that finger pretty darn straight. Mm -hmm. It's not always straight today, though, because your finger's been bent now for years, and it's accustomed to that bent position. So although I release the cord today, will put you into a splint afterwards that you'll wear at nighttime, and that splint over the coming weeks will slowly help stretch your finger the rest of the way. I see. Any questions before we get started? Not really. All but right, so we're gonna go ahead and do it, and uh, we'll catch up with you in the procedure room. Okay. Calm down. You will feel the numbing medicine. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. Ouch, you feel that? Yeah. Okay, now try and straighten your finger out as best as you can. All right, you are doing a lot better. It's not perfect, but some of this tightness, I think, is that your joint has been down for a long time. So I'm just gonna be pulling on your finger here a little bit just to see if there are a few bands yeah. that wanna pop still. Go ahead. I heard something, yeah. Yeah, you hear those? Let's just take a look here. Straighten your finger out as best as you can. All right, you are doing great there. And now turn your hand over. I just want to see all the way over. There you go. And now straighten it back. 
and then Sharon. I just want to measure. So how straight are you getting this right now? So Sharon, he can get 16 degrees. And where do we start, Sharon? Is that MCP? Yeah. 64. 64. Mm -hmm. So you're pretty good. You're down into the teens, and our goal with that splint is to get you down into the single digits if we can. That would be great. All right. Yeah. Good. What do you think, Wayne? I, it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say it's been a long time since they've seen their finger that straight. Yeah, really. All right. It, this might seem funny, but I want to put it in my pocket and check it. <laughs> oh, see if you can get it in your pocket. Yeah, I, like I couldn't that. put anything <laughs> in my pocket. Oh. All right. Wait, wait. All right. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy. All right. Over to therapy to get a splint made.